caution. This show includes explicit content and controversial mental shortcuts. If it's a serious problem for you, you should stop watching this video, although you'll probably regret it. People who don't like history often associate the period between the 16th and the 18th century with guys running around in tights and strange music, but that's not all. Actually, those times have seen some of the toughest guys in history. They were brutal, okay, but they were also honorable and they had a great sense of humor. And one of them probably saved Europe from starvation. Let me tell you about pirates in today's episode of History Uncensored. <laughs> In the 16th century, the European colonies started sending massive amounts of goods to Europe. They were expensive, of course, because, you know, it would be stupid to send something cheap to the other side of the world, right? I mean, as long as it's not AliExpress. Anyway, it's not a big surprise that soon there were people who wanted to lay their hands on the riches. The ships of those outlaws quickly started to sail under the Jolly Roger, a flag with a skull and shin bones or some other bones on it. And it didn't have to be black, very often there were also red flags. Anyway, the Jolly Roger was a clear sign that pirates were coming and for those who saw this flag, well, it was a sign that they were fucked. Or not necessarily. Because believe me or not, some of the marine robbers were something like Undercover police, they were called privateers, the good pirates, so to say. They were hired by rulers to fight pirates, but more often they were ordered to plunder ships from other countries. Francis Drake was such a privateer, he plundered Spanish ships unmercifully on the order of Queen Elizabeth I herself. So, for the Spanish, he might have been a pirate, but Spaniards, as well as the rest of Europe, owe him a lot. There was a monument of Francis Drake in Offenburg in Germany and, well, yes, it was well deserved, although it didn't make him look particularly majestic. You know how the great have their monuments showing them on horses or in valiant poses? Francis Drake in Offenburg stood still holding a potato flower. But it wasn't funny since the inscription read to Sir Francis Drake, the introducer of the potato in Europe. Millions of men cultivating the earth bless his immortal memory. This precious gift of God is a help for the poor, a relief from the penury. Mm, thank you, Mr. Drake. Very often it happened that a privateer decided to quit his job and become a bad pirate who would plunder all the ships regardless of their flag. This was the case with Captain Kidd and of course it was all about money. During the service for the United Kingdom, Captain Kidd and his crew were promised to be paid interest on the spoils stolen from enemy ships. And everything was going great when there were ships to attack, but after some time, a dry spell has come, even though they were on the sea. For a few months, they haven't come across any ship they could legally plunder, but one day the crew noticed a really impressive ship on the horizon and they decided that regardless of what the captain would say and whatever that ship was, they wanted to attack it. Captain Kidd was under pressure, so he had no choice but to attack the ship, which turned out to belong to the Indian ruler, who was friends with the English. From that moment, Captain Kidd was outside the law and became a pirate. On the other hand, if you didn't have ethical objections, becoming a pirate was simply profitable. Piracy was the most lucrative job of all available on the sea. The navy pay and merchant navy salary were ridiculously low compared to any pirate's income. So, no wonder many men have chosen such a career intentionally. However, there were some men who have become pirates under compulsion and they were not to be envied. How could one be forced to become a pirate? Well, there were two conditions to be met. First of all, you had to be a member of a ship attacked by pirates and secondly, you had to survive such an attack and then the lucky guy decided whether he wanted to be a prisoner or not. If he said no, his troubles were over. For example, pirate captain Benito de Soto locked such people below the deck of a conquered ship and then set it on fire. Apparently, he really enjoyed the view. And those who decided to be prisoners ended up better or worse, but in most cases their new owners were huge fans of sadism in its most refined forms. Pirate ships were full of boat hooks, bars, axes, hammers, all of which were used by many captains to torture the prisoners, only for amusement since there was not much entertainment on the sea. 
However, a captive had nothing to worry about if he was a shipwright or had some medical knowledge. He just needed to sign the pirate articles and then he joined the crew. And every reasonable captain took very good care of his crew since they knew that piracy was a team sport. Right. There are many myths about pirates. We all heard the tales about prisoners being forced to walk on a long boat and then jump into the water. But we have no information about walking the plank from that time. It was mentioned for the first time in the 19th century. There are also countless legends about the treasures that pirates have supposedly hidden in the Caribbean. The treasure of Captain Kidd was the most famous one. Many have searched, but still no one has found it. But pirates, to tell the truth, well, they didn't bury their treasures. So what did they do? To put it gently, they were no masters of economy. People who win a lot of money very often go bankrupt after some time and this was also the case with pirates. They split the spoils after conquering a ship and then set a course for the nearest port where they spend everything on girls and wine. Well, at least sometimes they were creative. For example, they would buy a huge barrel of wine, put it on the street and then forced every passerby to drink from it. But pirates weren't just groups of thugs without rules. No, 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 those guys had strict rules. For example, Black Bart's pirate code provided equal access to the fresh provisions, alcohol and clothing, and playing cards or dice for money was strictly forbidden. It was not allowed to take boys or girls on board, although there were some exceptions, but we will talk about them later. The worst violations were, of course, deserting the ship and hiding during battles. That's why we didn't have too many pirates in France. Many pirate crews were even insured. Of course, in their own pirate way. The code stated, if any member of the crew should lose a limb or become a cripple, he will be compensated in money or in slaves. And what were the consequences for breaking the code? Well, of course, the worst violations were punished by death, but there was also the lash. Usually one was sentenced to 40 lashes on his bare back, but some of the punishments were really creative. For example, marooning. It was an act of abandoning the culprit on a desert island, leaving him with just a bottle of water, a small barrel of gunpowder and a few bullets. And it was up to that guy whether he tried to survive or just immediately put a bullet in his head. Pirates were really tough guys and if you put several dozen of such men on a ship, conflicts are inevitable. So what was the way of dealing with that? If the pirates haven't managed to sort it out, there was a duel between the two. The quartermaster took them ashore and then, just like in western movies, they were placed back to back and after walking a set number of paces, they turned around and shot their rival. But what if they both missed? There were no draws. The duel had to be finished with cold steel. Speaking of weapons, it's worth mentioning that it was the fetish of most of the pirates. Seriously, they would pay crazy amounts of money for guns and sabers ornamented so richly that they looked like pieces of art. And obviously, pirate weaponry was always in battle readiness. Just like in North Korea. It has to be mentioned that piracy was not a male domain exclusively. There weren't many girls on the ships, but some of them, for example Anne Bonny or Mary Reed, have really earned their place in the history of piracy, and not because they downloaded series from torrent sites. They fought alongside a reportedly handsome pirate, Calico Jack, and Chuck Norris himself would have been jealous of their physical fitness and strength, but still, every time they were on board, they dressed like men and relieved themselves only when nobody was watching. Still, this last thing is not that surprising. Thank God there were two of them, they could go to the toilet together. Among other jobs, Anne and Mary took part in the bold operation of intercepting a ship full of food and ammunition. Sounds like a typical pirate job, right? Well, not exactly. The ship was mud at a port, but somehow the girls and the rest of the crew managed to steal it. Unfortunately, because of this and quite a few other actions, they were pursued by privateers, who have eventually managed to track down Calico Jack's ship after some time, and then... something pretty odd happened. 
when the privateers boarded the ship, the male part of the attacked crew fled below the deck. Only Anne and Mary fought back. At first, the girls decided to use verbal persuasion, so they told the guys what they think about them, Mel Gibson style, but it didn't work. So then, the girls decided to use another form of persuasion. They fired a few bullets in the cargo hold where the pirates were hiding, and although they killed a guy and injured a few more, they didn't convince the rest of the crew to join the fight. Despite having fought like tigers, the girls were captured, but that's not the end of their story. The male part of the crew have been hanged, but when the same was about to happen to Anne and Mary, both girls claimed that they were pregnant and they were saying the truth, so the sentence had to be adjourned. Mary died after a few months, but Anne's sentence has been adjourned several times after she had given birth, and we have absolutely no evidence that it has ever been executed. In no way diminishing the girls or their achievements, it has to be said loud and clear that the most hardcore pirate of all was Edward Teach, aka Blackbeard. He was a right bundle of tricks, that one, he had 30 cannons on his ship. 300 guys in his crew, yet he recognized that if he was to be successful, his appearance needed to spread terror too. Can you imagine a contemporary movie about pirates in which the captain doesn't have a long beard? Yeah, I thought so. This style was developed by Blackbeard himself, and his Zack Wildish beard combined with his frame were enough to make him look like Satan himself, but it wasn't enough for him. Whenever he was about to start a fight, he put a slow burning fuse in his head, so it looked as if smoke belched from his head. <laughs> Edward really cared for his name and he always was making sure that people would not forget that he was completely incalculable. For example, once he was drinking with two of his comrades, but suddenly he took two pistols off the wall and still holding the weapons, he put his hands underneath the table. One of the guys played it safely and said he should be pushing along, but the other one decided to stay. He was convinced that his captain wouldn't hurt him, right? Well, he would and he did, because soon after the first guy left, Blackbeard blew the candles out and shot both his pistols at his comrade's legs, crippling him for life. When other pirates learned about it and still terrified asked their captain why he had done such a thing, he calmly replied that he had to shoot someone every once in a while so everyone would remember that he was the boss. However, Blackbeard could behave decently. For a pirate, of course, this happened when the crew was cooperating with him and was willing to give him all of their belongings. And if somebody didn't want to return something, well, things got worse. For example, a nice diamond ring would come in a nice set with a stubborn guy's finger. Remember that annoying friend of yours who's a real swine and an annoying douchebag, but still he gets all the girls? Well, Edward was such a guy. Apparently, he just could not get rid of girls whenever he walked into a bar. Very often, he took a girl on his ship and then... Whatever you just thought is wrong because they got married. This way, Edward got married about 14 times despite the fact that his previous wives were still alive. <gasps> you could do that? I think we've already established that Blackbeard was an extraordinary figure and another proof for that is that he was able to block a port, but it was no ordinary port, it was Charleston, one of the most imported seaports in the southern part of North America. Using his small fleet he was able to loot nine ships and one of them was a passenger ship full of influential people who paid a lot of cash for letting them go. How did such a badass die? Well, of course, in a spectacular way. He died in a battle which was caused by an ambush. He was shot five times. He had 20 cuts on his body, but the thing that finally killed him was a deep cut in his neck, which nearly cut his head off. Now you know that the subject of pirates is incredibly interesting. Let us know what you think in the comment section below. Remember about our Facebook page and remember to subscribe so you don't miss the upcoming episodes of History Uncensored.